Anti-Semitism is also known as anti-Zionism. When a person claims to be anti-Zionist but not anti-Semitic, uh, it's equivalent, equivalent to, to saying that they are not Islamophobic but despise or hate all Muslims. Amjad Taha, political strategist, author of The Deception of the Arab Spring, and otherwise known as the Peace Falcon of the Middle East. Thank you so much for joining me on Global Perspectives. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Amjad, I'm so curious, what was your development, your journey, um, so that today you have this incredible message of peace for the world. And I know you visited Israel. Could you share with us a bit what your experience was like? It was a great experience, to be honest, as, as we arrived to, to Tel Aviv, uh, to Ben Gurion uh, Airport. It was amazing as we met uh, the president, uh, uh, the, the, the prime minister and uh, the rest of the leaders and the decision makers in Israel. It was great, it was great to hear from their perspective and point of view. And going all the way visiting the Wheeling Wall, I think uh, that was a great moment. It was during the Hanukkah, um, Hanukkah, if I'm pronouncing it right. And this is when we, uh, there was a, a candle that we had to light, and, and it was it was a great moment. It was a, a moment of hope. At least that's what we saw in the eyes of those children as they look at us. And I was wearing exactly the same clothes here, traditional clothing, and they look at us at one point. I think it was the fact that we strongly believe that we, the people of the Middle East, understand the region better than anyone else, and any crisis will be resolved uh, from 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 within. It's it's a great. Um, it, it was a great journey. Amjad, we are approaching the second anniversary of the signing of the Abraham Accords. As you sit in the Middle East, in the region, what are your thoughts on peace between Israel and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and other Muslim nations? I'm confident that the Saudi Arabia will reach at one point uh, peace with Israel. Uh, more nations will establish peace with Israel, including Qatar, which is already cooperating with, with Tel Aviv in, in a variety of areas, uh, as uh, Koshner uh, mentioned them in his uh, recent book. And, uh, but maybe not under the Biden's uh, time, perhaps when Donald Trump or any other president is in, in the office. I think there is a lot to tackle in the Middle East and elsewhere, especially with um, with a lot of anti-Semitism that exists still in, in in the world and in the in the in the in the region. Amjad, I want to uh, I want to ask you two follow-up questions. So you just said that you don't think peace might be possible under the Biden administration, but potentially under a future Trump or Republican administration. Why is that? I think it would be very uh, difficult to uh, achieve uh, a peace with with the Arab countries or the peer countries in the region while you're still shaking the hand of the enemy of the region right now, which is the Iranian regime. So uh, I don't think you sending the right message to, to the Middle East for peace. Uh, the people of the Middle East, uh, the countries in the Middle East, UAE, Bahrain, Morocco and so on, they put their hand forward for peace with Israel and other countries, and they have achieved so. So instead of um, uh, paying them back in, in, in making more peace and in encountering and tackling the terrorists, either in Lebanon or Gaza or, uh, or anywhere else in, in the Middle East, in fact, what we see here is, is uh, uh, still a step forward from, from Biden administration towards Iran and a step back from the from the region. Amjad, I'd like to explore this with you just a little bit more. So tell our audience exactly what is the connection between the Iranian threat on the one hand that Israel and the Gulf uh, Sunni countries share together and making peace between Muslim countries and Israel. What's the connection? Uh, absolutely. Iran is a threat right now to the Middle East. The Iranian regime causes uh, as much as threat to the people in Tel Aviv as much 
and uh, in Saudi Arabia and so on. For, for instance, Iran supports the Houthis right on the borders of, of Saudi Arabia to attack the Muslim people in Saudi Arabia and so on. The Houthis rockets has reached all the way to UAE and all the countries around the Middle East, around the region. Now, Iranian Iranian regime still support the terrorists in Gaza, still support the, the terrorists in Lebanon. Iranian, uh, Iranian regime and the Iranian re, uh, revolutionary guards has killed a lot of uh, Syrian people and so on. Now, Iran causes a lot of threats to the Middle East. While on the other side, what we see Israel, Israel is tackling those terrorists, the terrorists in Lebanon or the terrorists in Gaza or all the way to in Iran and they have succeeded in doing so. This is why there is a lot of joint forces against the evil uh, in Tehran. And Amjad, we saw recently US President Joe Biden make his first trip to Israel and then Saudi Arabia. As you know, when he came into the office, President Biden distanced himself from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and he said that he wanted to make the kingdom a pariah state. What is your assessment and the perception of the Biden visit? Failure. That's that's what we call it. It's a failure. It's not what America is about. Um, we were really shocked up to this point. Everyone in the Middle East, expertise, uh, researchers, analysts, uh, journalists call it. Everyone is really shocked. Uh, this is not America. This is not what America is about. This is not what the White House should be acting like. And this is not what a friend should be behaving like. So this is not America. In fact, the Iranian regime is the first country around the world, the first regime that says they are anti-Zionists and anti-Semitics, and uh, Biden is ready to make a, a deal with them. Amjad, you grew up in the region. Tell me your assessment of anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism in the Middle East. What was the experience for you growing up, and are, are you seeing any changes since then? There is a lot of changes. In fact, let, let's talk about the changes rather than the past. If we're speaking about the changes right now, what, what many people observe and see, or at least from my perspective, anti-Semitism is also known as anti-Zionism. When a person claims to be anti-Zionist but not anti-Semitic, uh, it's equivalent, uh, equivalent to, to saying that they are not Islamophobic but despise or hate all Muslims. Anti-Zionism is, is a concealed form of anti-Semitism. Uh, anti it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, that some of those preaching hate in London and in, in New York and, and Paris today are, are teachers and lecturers at schools and universities on those cities, and which means they are bringing out an, an, an army of hate uh, that would be willing to support terrorist attack on a pregnant woman in, in Jerusalem or, or Tel Aviv. Amazingly, um, you, you would never encounter such a, such a heinous behavior uh, towards minorities and religious communities uh, in UAE, Bahrain or Morocco. And this is due to the fact that peace, uh, uh, peace and understanding of, of uh, diversity began at right at the young age. Uh, many countries have begun to adjust and re-evaluate and educate uh, their educational system. I think it is UAE. This is a great country uh, and a great example of uh, of countering terrorist and, and extremism. Uh, a country with 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 two hundred nationalities living in peace and prosperity. Once again, uh, we, we need more countries in the Middle East uh, to be like UAE, and 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 the world is in need of of, of brave leaders like uh, the president of of United Arab Emirates, MBZ, uh, a country that uh, that made success or the reason why people today are calling Abu Dhabi uh, a country of tolerance or a capital of tolerance is because of the approach of a br building bridges of communication between people in different cultures and in a, in, a, in, a, in a respectful environment that rejects extremism and emphasizes on acceptance of others. Amjad, I visited the UAE in my official capacity, and I witnessed for myself the coexistence that exists in the streets of Dubai and Abu Dhabi and elsewhere in the Emirates. 
And, uh, and of course, like you said, the UAE has completely reworked their curriculum and truly their society to, uh, to rid themselves of extremist ideologies. I think you're right that the West could learn from the Emiratis how to counter extremism. Um, what I wanna ask you though, is it seems to me that when it comes to the Middle East specifically, what we need to see in order for, for us to really counter anti-Semitism is an acceptance of a Jewish presence, a sovereign Jewish presence in the region. Anja, do you think that the region is ready for that notion? Absolutely. I think uh, the whole notion uh, or uh, the, the understanding of the, of the youth right now is changing in, in a various way where uh, people see uh, the right of the Jewish state to exist and the fact that Israel and the Jewish community is part of the history of the Middle East. So I believe, yes, in fact, uh, we are very optimistic about more countries joining and more calls for, for peace with Israel and the Jewish community and the acceptance of, of, of the Jewish community. And uh, the, the great example is also that we've seen a lot of uh, uh, a lot of Jew Jewish people after the uh, the peace accord and the Abrahamic accord with UAE. I see more Israelis and Jewish here than I see in Tel Aviv. Yes, it's incredible. It's incredible. I had that experience myself when when I arrived in my hotel in uh, in Dubai and everybody at the uh, restaurant there was speaking Hebrew. I thought I was in Israel. So it's quite it's quite an amazing thing. Amjad, I'd love to pivot us to some of the internal struggles in uh, in Middle Eastern countries and your book, The Deception of the Arab Spring. Tell us what that deception is. I think the deception is um, the fact that uh, people do call for change and changes such as the Abrahamic Accord, when it called, this is part of what the youth want, what the people want, that kind of change towards peace, towards uh, coexistence and prosperity and so on. But what happens that a lot of Islamic groups such as the Hamas or the Muslim Brotherhoods or the Iranian regime, when the Iranian regime starts supporting uh, riots. So that, that, that there is a deception is rather than it was a hull rather than an Arab Spring. It was it was really a hull for people. What we've seen, there is a destruction in Syria. There is no stability in Libya. There is no stability in Iraq. There is no stability whatsoever. Myself, I spoke from experience, visited those places uh, and connected with people. So the image was very clear. It was anything but the Arab, about an, an Arab Spring. Amja, tell us a little bit about the Muslim Brotherhood in the early years of, uh, of the quote unquote Arab Spring in Egypt. Well, they present a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of danger into, to the world. And uh, for example, there is a lot of institutions right now in, in US supported by the Democrats. And those institutions, they work alongside with the Muslim Brotherhood against the people in the Middle East and they support Al-Qaeda and so on in, in Yemen and so on. Those uh, individuals and those institutions are right now run in USA, supported by the Democrats and so on. There's a lot of mosques being used in France and in London in collecting a lot of charity and those charity we have experienced, a lot of their money went all the way to Gaza to support Hamas, Hamas to launch rockets on the Israeli children and women and so on. So it's, a, and they're, they're very smart in using charity companies and using uh, schools and using uh, various educational institutions and so on. And they use the system itself to uh, abuse and also to, uh, to, to support terrorists and glorify terrorism. I'd love to flesh out a little bit more you're saying that the Muslim Brotherhood has found ways to use Western democratic rules and institutions to ultimately support terrorism. Is that right, Amjad? Absolutely, and it still exists and the support continues. They have kind of that lobbyism that they will reach writers all the way to New York Times and Washington Post and so on, and they make them write articles against any 
individual or any leader in the Middle East that is looking for change. Well, this is the reason why they call a person like myself a Zionist. If Zionism means uh, support for a change, if Zionism means a support for dignity, if Zionism means a support for a success, then every single person in the humanities is a Zionist. Um, Jad, it's so um, it's really so incredible to hear you say those words. I know that uh, for the international Jewish community to see someone like yourself wearing traditional Arab garb and saying uh, such words, it really gives us hope for a future that I think we dreamt about for our children and grandchildren. And, and to hear you say that uh, to be a Zionist means in essence to stand with humanity. Um, it, it really gives me a tremendous amount of hope. And so Amjad, I know our time is wrapping up. I was wondering if on that note, um, is there a message that you have for foreign international audience, Jewish, Christian, Baha'i? What, what is your message as you sit in the Gulf and, uh, and speak to us today? The message is with peace and prosperity, uh, together we fight and together we stand. And even on the other side of, of the panel, the Palestinians have realized that they cannot obtain their rights and dignity by violating the life and the dignity rights of others. Together we stand, together we thrive. And for peace, sometimes you have to fight. I think what we need in the Middle East is leaders such as MBZ, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, and what we need countries such as UAE, countries who look for peace, countries like Bahrain, countries who are developed, such as Israel, who are right now doing a great job in encountering terrorists, terrorists that all the way in Gaza, all the way in Tehran and, and wherever they are. What we need is a brave leader, brave countries. And it's absolutely horrifying to see that people in this day and age still celebrate the murder of Israeli children. Um, Jad, um... I hope that your message of peace truly spreads throughout the Middle East region and, and, and in fact, the world.